Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to the library tour of doom. <laughs> a library tour where we go book by book, shelf by shelf, at random intervals, ping-ponging forever in an attempt to crush you. <laughs> and today we're going back to 2015. This is Yurei, the Japanese Ghost, uh, by Zach Davison. In uh, production there, you've got the ghost, the ghostly figure, very lightly inscribed on the cover, just beautiful. A beautiful volume, actually. This is the Naked Hardcover. It had no dust jacket from Chin Music Press back in 2015. Something that they clearly designed uh, to be a collector's item. That they clearly designed to be a keeper. This is signed by the author with a ghostly illustration. And starts with uh, pages and pages of artwork. The artwork is right up in the front here. We have one... Uh, classic print after another of the Yurei, of the Japanese ghost. Let me see, if I had a true presenter's flair, I could do this backwards. Look at that. Look at those. Aren't they incredible? There's one uh, two-page spread that I just love here. Let me see if I can, if I can find it. It's right at the beginning of the book. Uh, the artwork is amazing and must... Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Let me see if I can do this correctly. Look at that. She's coming up out of a print that he is making. Incredible. Uh, and this is uh, a story, a collection of stories, sort of a natural history of the phenomenon and the great stories of the Japanese ghost, of the yurei, which doesn't often come out of prints. Usually it rises up out of a well, which is why they're pasty white and why they're, uh, they tend to have wet hair, uh, awry hair. There are all the pictures throughout here always show that. Uh, a point that Zach Davison tries to make is that the Yure is uh, different from the Western conception of a ghost in that it's very constricted. It's, it has a usual visual iconography and a usual story as well. And that makes it, that uh, serves to make it, if you believe it or not, more frightening, not less. You would think the adaptability would make the, the Western version uh, more frightening, but that's not true. I want to read you a bit of what Zach Davis, he's a fantastically companionable writer, right from the beginning when he tells, he opens the book with a story about how he himself once rented a Yurei haunted apartment in Japan uh, and got it for a great deal because it was, because it was known to be haunted. Uh, but he goes on here, uh, Western ghosts and Japanese Yurei are spirits of the departed, both symbols of the past reaching out a cold, dead, and often unwelcome hand into the comfortable present. But Western ghosts are more of a storytelling device. They are an amorphous thing that suits the needs of the moment and can be used to incite fear or humor, even romance or healing. And he mentions uh, Ghost, the movie, and he mentions uh, the ghost of Mrs. Muir, where romance is found with a ghost. And he, of course, mentions Beetlejuice. He says, of course, some cultural clues exist in the West about ghosts. Anyone can immediately identify a Halloween costume ghost with a draped white sheet and some clanking chains, or a movie version of, with a semi-transparent wraith colored white and floating down a staircase. These are stereotypes of ghosts, it's true, but a ghost can just as easily be a solid thing, capable of interacting with the physical world. They can look every bit like a human being they were when they were alive, or equally like a risen, rotting corpse, or often both in the same movie, think of Beetlejuice. A Western ghost can be anything. Yure, on the other hand, follow certain rules, obey certain laws. They are bound by centuries of culture and tradition. Like the leprechaun, they have a specific appearance and purpose. These rules supply authenticity, making them culturally rele relevant and recognizable. Also, these rules make them more horrifying than the constantly changing Western ghost, which can be played for laughs, romance, or fear at any given moment. And to most Japanese people, Yure are very, very real. Uh, and he goes on to talk about uh, Oban, Oban, the, the feast of the, the, on the calendar where you typically get a weekend off to, to celebrate Yure and to placate them with gifts and festivals and whatnot. And the book goes on to tell famous stories and uh, chart them in the, uh, in the literature of Yure uh, that, that is uh, very widespread throughout Japan. It, uh, the masterpiece being by Yude... Uh, Ueda Akinari, in, 19, in 1776, wrote a big book called uh, Ugetsu Monogatari, 
uh, which uh, Davison said is considered the greatest work of 18th century Japanese literature, and which uh, I, of which I do not have a copy in any language. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that Penguin has never done a, a version of that, uh, the, and uh, Ran Random House and Mo Modern Library and whatnot. I'm pretty sure that it is that it remains a largely unknown masterpiece of of Japanese literature in the West in translation. Even though Davison lists a number of translations that have been done, I've never seen any of them. And I have been fairly active looking for this sort of thing. So uh, uh, what I would like, of course, in addition to, to recommending this book, I highly recommend this book, is, uh, you know, if some of the, the Japanese literary classics that are listed in here that, that Davison writes about so tantalizingly existed in, an, in a readily available popular form in English that I could read. Uh, well, one way or another, this is a delightful book. Like so many of the books in the Library Tour of Doom, I have at one point written about this. That's absolutely unavoidable. It's been my passion and my profession for longer than most of you have been alive. So I'm not going to bother uh, to, uh, to hammer home that point in every video, but you can assume that if I'm talking about a book that is not a new release, I've probably written about it somewhere. And also that if I'm talking about a book that is a new release, I've probably written about it somewhere, or I'm going to. <laughs> I'm always on the hunt for more venues. But this, this gave me a tremendous appreciation of what the yurei is in Japanese culture and in Japanese history. thought it was fantastic. And uh, I'm sure that this wasn't uh, Chin Music Press's goal, but I'd be willing to bet this volume will become collectible. I'd be willing to bet that if that hasn't happened already, it will. I'm pretty sure that Chin Music Press hasn't reprinted this. I'm not even 100% sure that there's still a going concern. But they pulled out the stops when they made this. And that is typically... That plus the the, uh, the cult-friendly subject matter is typically a, a, what you need to make something collectible. Uh, and that is your, your book for today. And the only thing left, that is all of you are expecting... Uh, that I need to say about this book is that although the cultural phenomenon of the Yure may be very, very real to the Japanese even today in the era of cell phones and whatnot and, and deep fakes, uh, Yure themselves are not real. And the reason I say that is not to pick on any one island nation, but because no ghosts are real. Because ghosts aren't real. No matter what Zach Davison writes so, so charmingly at the beginning of this book about the weird phenomenon that he couldn't explain in his Yurei haunted house, they aren't real. And I assure you that if he were bothering to try to explain those phenomena instead of use them for a book, he could have come up with explanations, as could any of the previous renters of that, of that property <laughs> or any other property. The reason I know that is because, say it with me now, there is no supernatural element to existence. None. No goblins, no ghosts, no leprechauns, no deities, no prayer, no souls, no spirits living in the present world or wandering in the afterlife. None of that is real. None of it is. If you're driving down the road and you see a squirrel dead burst open on the shoulder of the road, in the split second before you drive past it without even thinking, if you don't attribute anything supernatural to that squirrel, then you cannot attribute anything supernatural to yourself. And you don't attribute anything supernatural to that squirrel. You don't think about that squirrel's ghost haunting that section of, of the roadway forever afterwards. You don't think about a squirrel afterward, afterlife where that squirrel will either meet eternal punishment or where he's never able to find the nuts that he buried last spring or, 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 or eternal pleasure where he never needs to where he gets to just sleep in his hole in the tree forever and ever. Or maybe in the squirrel afterlife, he doesn't have to sleep in a hole in a tree, which he only does because it protects him from predators. Maybe he gets to roll around in the grass. Ever seen a squirrel roll around in the grass? Maybe they dream about it. Now, you don't think about any of those things when it comes to the squirrel by the side of the road. And that's because you don't associate anything supernatural with that squirrel. And that is because you know on some level that it's not real for any animal. So the only way that you can get around that and say that any of this is real is to say that you're not an animal. So I just thought I just thought I would toss that. You are demonstrably an animal. So if you say that, then well, <laughs> I just wanted I just wanted to add as a note here that although this is a charming, wonderful book, something I very much recommend, it is entirely about something that is not real. Okay, <laughs> so so there we go. We're we're done with another. 
book in the library tour of doom. Some of you have emailed me and said, how long do you plan on doing this? Some of you seem therefore not to have gotten the point. <laughs> this is an, an ending library tour. I'm going to do one book at a time, no theme, no bookshelves forever. <laughs> so, so buckle in. We have a long, long way to go. <laughs> in fact, we will be doing this library tour in the afterlife. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.